Hey gamers, welcome to the mid-season premiere of Video Games in the World. We are in Black History Month, and today, I will be talking about black characters in video games, as well as black developers. Now, when it comes to video game characters and the industry itself, there are plenty of black video game characters, and there are also developers in the gaming industry. Of course, some people embrace these characters and others do not so much. But I believe that if I love or hate a character is due to the way they, that he or she was created and developed. In the same manner, I love or hate a game due to the way it was created and developed. And now gamers, let us begin our episode. Enjoy. So what exactly is Black History Month? Black History Month is a time to celebrate the social, political, and economic achievements of African Americans in the USA. Not to forget their achievements in sports, media, and entertainment. Of course, there are other historical months that people celebrate. In March, there's Women's History Month. June is Pride Month for the LGBT community, and from September to October, it's Hispanic Heritage Month for the Hispanic community. Moving on, when it comes to Black History Month, we think of black people like George Washington Carver, who revolutionized farming and was the father of the peanut, and discovered over 300 uses for it, such as soap, ink, and instant coffee. Other famous black scientists include Keith Black, Janet Bashan, Patricia Bath, Giannis Bluford, Macy Jemison, Mary Winston Jackson, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and many more. In sports, Jesse Owens won four gold medals in the 1936 Olympics, which angered Hitler. Jackie Robinson broke the racial barrier in baseball in 1947. Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's record in 1974, which was thought unbreakable. Chuck Cooper was one of the first basketball players in the NBA that was black and broke the racial barrier in the NBA in 1950. Kenny Washington broke the racial barrier in the NFL as well in 1939. In boxing, we remember all these great boxers like Joe Lewis, Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Larry Holmes, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, George Foreman, Floyd Mayweather, and many more. In poetry and literature, there are also very much loved and remembered black figures such as Lucy Terry, Phyllis Wheatley, Maya Angelou, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Richard Wright, Alice Walker, and many more. Also in history, we remember Clara Brown, who was a slave for 50 long years until she was freed, moved to Colorado, and became a successful entrepreneur. Mary Fields was the first star root mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service. Frederick Douglass was the national leader of the abolitionist movement fighting against slavery. And we also remember Harriet Tubman, who was also an abolitionist, a humanitarian, and an armed scout and spy for the United States Army during the American Civil War. Bessie Coleman was the first woman of color to be an aviator. We also remember Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Malcolm X saying, by any means necessary, and Rosa Parks saying, no. And such things sparked the civil rights movement. Not only blacks were fighting for their rights in the 1960s, but also women, Hispanics, LGBT people, and other minorities as well. Yes, the 1960s was a decade of great change in the world, not only seen in the United States, but also in countries like Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and many more. In entertainment, the first black actress to win an Oscar in a supporting role was Hattie McDaniel for her role as Mammy in the 1940 hit film, Gone with the Wind. Sidney Poitier was the first black man to win the Oscar and the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Leading Role in 1963 for his role in Lilies of the Field. In 2002, Denzel Washington was the first black man to win in the leading role for Training Day since Sidney Poitier nearly 40 years ago at the time. But it's not his first Oscar. He won an Oscar 
for Best Actor in a Supporting Role for the 1990 film Glory. Halle Berry was the first black woman to win the Oscar for Best Actress in the Leading Role for her role in Monsters Ball. There were other blacks who won Oscars and deserved it for their amazing performances such as Jimmy Fox, Monique, Lupita Nyong'o, Viola Davis, Mahershala Ali, Whoopi Goldberg, and also winners of Emmy Awards and Screen Actors Guild such as Uzo Aduba from Orange is the New Black and Killett McLaughlin from Stranger Things. In terms of black music, Francis Johnson was the first black musician out of many. There were also various black musicians that were very successful in the 20th century, such as Charlie Parker, Louis Armstrong, Ray Charles, Patti LaBelle, Natalie Cole, The Supremes, Little Richard, Grover Washington Jr., Bill Withers, Stevie Wonder, The Pointer Sisters, The JBs, James Brown, Grandmaster Flash, Prince, Beyonce, and many more. In terms of music, we remember the NWA, which was comprised of Easy e Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, MC Ren, DJ Yella, and Arabian Prince, sparking a massive revolution with their controversial yet hit song, F the Police. In education, there were various black educators that changed academia in America. These names include Cornel West, Bobby Austin, Michael Carter, Robert Hill, Joe Lewis Clark, Ramona Edelin, Catherine Butler Jones, and many more. Come this November of 2018, we shall remember the historical moment when Barack Obama became the very first black president of the United States of America 10 years ago. Not to mention the only black president that served two terms according to the Constitution of the USA. Obama was praised by many, but scorned by others. Although, some people didn't agree with his methods, at least people have to be thankful to him for the success of same-sex marriage becoming legal nationwide, immigration reform, police accountability, and other things as well. Blacks have achieved so much and they will continue. I believe that all humans can do such great things and can contribute the best to the world. Regardless of skin color, regardless of gender, all of us can do this. Now, we've seen various game developers and mostly white, but honestly though, that doesn't mean that there are no developers of different colors. There are various of them and also female game developers like Amy Hennig, Jay McGonagall, Anna Anthropy, Helena Santos, and many more. Now, when it comes to video game developers that are black, we have to go all the way back before the era of Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. The very first black video game developer was Jerry Lawson. Born in New York City in 1940, Gerald La Anderson Lawson is famous for being a video game pioneer. How did he become one? Well, when he was growing up, he dabbled with electronics before going to Queens College, which is part of the City University of New York. His interest in computing led him in the 1970s to Silicon Valley's Homebrew Computer Club, of which he was the only black member at the time. While with the club, he crossed paths with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. In the mid-1970s, Lawson helped create the Fairchild Channel F, a home entertainment machine that was produced in 1976 by Fairchild Semiconductor, where he worked as Director of Engineering and Marketing. Only years earlier, Mike Markula, co-founder of Apple Computers Inc., had headed marketing for the company. Though basic by today's standards, Lawson's work allowed people to play a variety of games in their homes and paved the way for systems such as the Atari 2600, Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. He was one of the few engineers in his industry he said that colleagues were surprised that he was black very often. And this is a memorable quote of his. With some people, it's become an issue. I've had people look at me with, at, with total shock, particularly if they hear my voice because they think that all black people have a voice that sounds a certain way and they know it. And I sit there and go, oh yeah, 
Well, sorry, I don't. Lawson died in 2011 due to complications regarding his diabetes. He was survived by his wife, Catherine, and two children. Aside from Lawson, there are other black video game developers such as Andrew Augustin. Augustin is the founder and creative director of Notion Games, LLC. He is also a BE modern man. Before launching his own company, he worked for Edge of Reality as a character designer and then as a world builder for Sims 3 Pets for Xbox 360 and PS3. Gordon Bellamy started his career as a lead designer for EA's Madden franchise. He also served as executive director of the International Game Developers Association. He recently co-founded Hangry Studios, a consulting firm focused on quality assurance and automation for PC, mobile, and virtual reality games. Morgan Gray has been in the video game industry for quite some time. He's worked on a number of best-selling games including Tomb Raider, Star Wars, and the Bureau, XCOM Declassified. Derek Mance is a founder of Sungura Games. In an interview with Black Enterprise, he said his company is primarily African-American and is steady. He offered this advice for those seeking career in video games. Those looking to join gaming, make sure you're good at math. Also, look into schools that offer gaming in undergrad. Dennis Matthews is a game developer and founder of Revelation Interactive Game Development. He went to school initially for aerospace engineering, but then went on to study game design. Matthews is also a developer for Terrific Studios. Marcus Montgomery was a lead game designer at Glue Mobile. He is also the founder at WeAreGameDevs.com, a platform for supporting in diversity in the gaming industry. He made news recently by modifying a black Barbie doll into a game developer doll for his wife, who is also a game developer. Joseph Salter is the founder of Entertainment Arts Research, Inc., a leader in the video game industry. He is the chairman of the International Game Developers Association's Diversity Advisory Board and the author of a series of game design and development textbooks published by McGraw-Hill. Laura Teclamariam works as a senior product manager for gaming and entertainment giant EA. She graduated with a degree in electrical engineering computer science from the University of California, Irvine. Lisette Titre, ACG artist and computer animator, has contributed to some of EA's highest profile games, including Tiger Woods Golf for Nintendo's Wii, The Simpsons, and Dante's Inferno. Charisma Williams is creative director of Matimio.com and works as a, at Microsoft as a senior experienced developer designer for Xbox Connect, which lets players interact games without the use of a controller. While there is not many blacks in the gaming industry, I must say that a lot of them are doing an amazing job in the industry. But I hope that one way or another, the number grows and with that growth, we bring in more merited and skilled black developers in the video gaming industry. And remember, you can do it. Put your mind into it. Do not give up, and you will succeed. Blacks make a high number of demographics in terms of playing video games. They are the second largest ethnic group of gamers after Asian Americans. Of course, video games have black characters to represent the demographic. But before we begin about black characters in games, when it comes to such characters in entertainment, I think not only of action characters like Jon Stewart, Blade, and Black Panther, but also characters who look in the best interest of others and have great development such as Benjamin Sisko, Tuvok, Uhura, Jefferson Pierce, Stacker Pentecost, Finn, Grey Worm, Navia, Lucas, James Rhodes, Hot Girl, Firestorm, Michonne, Ezekiel, Vixen, Yordi LaForge, Lando Calrissian, and more. But enough of that now, we have to get on. The 2009 study, The Virtual Census, Representations of Gender, Race, and Age in Video Games, published by the University of Southern California, showed that African Americans appear in video games in proportion to their numbers in the real world, but mainly in sports, games, and in titles that reinforce stereotypes. 39 years ago, the first obviously black video game character appeared in basketball. 
programmed by Alan Miller for the Atari 800 home computer. That same year, a black basketball player also appeared in Atari Basketball in the Arcade, which came first as it is, at present, uncertain, but the 800 version had a distinguishing characteristic, it was in color. Interestingly, the arcade game only rendered its graphics in black and white, so the Atari 800's black basketball star, let's call him John Q. Basketball, broke the color barrier in more ways than one. More black characters appearing in, were appearing in video games, although most of them were in sports. We also remember Shaquille O'Neal having a video game of his own called Shaq Fu, although criticism was not positive enough. But of course, there are many black characters in video games that, although some of them are secondary characters, they are memorable for helping the main protagonist. A very memorable example is Sergeant Avery Johnson. Sergeant Avery Johnson was a soldier for the UNSC in the Halo universe and fought alongside Master Chief. He was a rough, gruff soldier who was eccentric, often delivering outlandish speeches to boost the morale of those serving under him. However, when it came down to it, he was a no-nonsense NCO who, although caring deeply for his troops, pushed them hard during training. Another seemingly peculiar aspect of his behavior is that he never considered John 117 or any of the other Spartan 2s, Section 3 freaks or inhuman cyborgs. He had a large amount of respect for them and appeared to respect every human fighting for humanity as well as the Sangeli once they joined forces with the USNC. In return, Thel Badam respected him as well. Before and after his death, saying sorrowfully to John, I am sorry, Spartan. And, even in death, your sergeant guides us all. Metal Gear Solid Although an antagonist, Fortune of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty was a very memorable character who you have to feel major sympathy for. Because after the death of her father, Scott Dolph, a U.S. Marine Commander, not to forget the death of her husband, Commander Jackson, her mother's death and miscarriage of her unborn child, she blames Snake for all of her sorrows. But when she realizes the truth and is shot by Ocelot, at first she believes that all these bullets that could not hit her was not the result of her psychic talents, but staged by the Patriots. When Ocelot tries to eliminate Solidus, Raiden, Solid Snake, and Fortune using Metal Gear Ray, we all learn that she truly had the power after all. Her death is one of the saddest deaths in Metal Gear Solid franchise. Crying Wolf had a very tragic story as she was a child born in a terrible war. When you hear that her story narrated by Drevin, you just can't help but cry and feel so much sympathy for her. Drevin can actually modify weapons and give Snake information on the Beauty and the Beast unit, not to forget that at the end of the game during Meryl and Johnny's wedding, he provides wedding gifts and flowers with style. There are also very memorable characters such as the DARPA chief Donald Anderson giving Snake a card to unlock the other doors, and also Peter Stillman, a bomb Peter. disposal maker who Peter tried Stillman. to teach Fat Man one of the many values of life. There are some things you have to pass on. The trick is to know which one is the right one. And also you gotta feel sympathy for all of his mistakes too. I thought you'd retired. Mortal Kombat. Jax Briggs in the Mortal Kombat series is another memorable character due to his strength and also caring about his partner Sonya Blade and looking after her as well. Sonya would often boost Jack's confidence whenever he seemed to head south. In Mortal Kombat X, his daughter Jackie Briggs followed in her father's footsteps to join the special forces against his wishes. Jackie proves to be a great fighter and also who cares about her teammates and even falls for Takeda and not to forget she is great friends with Cassie Cage. Other black characters include Kai, who is an apprentice of, of Liu Kang, Tanya, a treacherous Edenian working for Quan Chi and Shinnok. Cyrax, a man who was against the Lin Kuei Cyber Initiative, but was caught and converted to a robot. Nevertheless, in the original timeline, he was good. Final Fantasy The very first character of color of the series debuted in Final Fantasy IV. Her name is Luca, and she's the princess of the Dwarf Kingdom. 
She's the aristocrat of the dwarves in the Underworld Kingdom and the child to King Giad. She appears several years later as a playable character in Final Fantasy IV, The After Years, with a drastic change in appearance. In The After Years, Luca's shadow face is gone, and she now has drastically a different design. At present, Luca has dark brown skin, plump lips, and a white nose. In the game, Luca claims she was never a fan of dwarven fashion, which makes us wonder if the rest of the dwarvens are black under their shadow guises. In Final Fantasy VI, Leo Kristoff is a memorable black character. He was a general in the Gastalian Empire and, despite the odds against him when he fought Kefka, he fought bravely to the end and he is a temporarily playable character. Leo's skin complexion is a subject of discussion as he is depicted as dark skin in Yoshitaka Amano's art and in his menu picture, as well as having the features of a black person, but his in-game sprite is very pale in comparison. His sprite being light color could be due to color palette restrictions within the game's code. In the mobile version, Leo's sprite has a darker skin complexion. Barrett Wallace is a very memorable character in Final Fantasy VII. Now, the only reason why he was acting tough and angry is due to his hatred of the Shinra, who took everything away from him. He lost his town, his wife, everything. But even with all that attitude, he has proven to be a caring adoptive father for Marlene, daughter of his best friend, Dine. He mourns for the deaths of Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge after they are killed by the Shinra to, to stop Avalanche. Kiros in Final Fantasy VIII is good friends with Laguna. He is a caring, intelligent individual who fought alongside his longtime associates, Laguna and Ward for the Galbadian army. Kiros is also considered to be Laguna's voice of reason. He later quits the Galbadian army with Laguna and Ward. Lainey in Final Fantasy IX is a bounty hunter. Lainey believes she's the finest looking bounty hunter in the world and will not hesitate to betray her most trustworthy associates. She's also known to be ill-mannered, scornful, and prideful. It is unknown, but Lainey appears to be of black mulatto descent. Donna in Final Fantasy X is a summoner from Kilika. She is dark-skinned, has brown eyes and black hair, which is tied up in a bun and ponytail. At times, Donna likes to give Yuna and her guardians a difficult time when encountering them. In Final Fantasy X and X-2, there are also characters of color like Lucille, Abuz and Rowdy of the Luka Goers, Letty of the Besaid Aurochs, and in Final Fantasy X-2, there's also Buddy, who is the contrast of Brother. He seems to be more calm and a voice of reason, and he seemed a little disappointed when Yuna doesn't remember him. Fran from Final Fantasy XII is a partner of Balthier's. She is calm and almost like a Vulcan from Star Trek doesn't display much emotions except during a Miss Frenzy. Fran's goals and dreams are in life are largely shrouded in mystery, but it's known she left her homeland to live a life of freedom. Although Fran likes to keep her distance, she is loyal to her friends and family. She cares deeply for her sisters in her homeland, despite claiming to be their sister no longer, having abandoned the Viera way of life. It is implied that Fran feels lonely and sorrowful for having left her family behind, as she warns her sister of following in her path, explaining it only leads to a life of solitude. In the Final Fantasy XIII video game, there's also Sass Catsroy. He is an Eddie Murphy-style comic relief in the game and is a father who loves his son very deeply and is reunited with him in the end. The Legend of Zelda Nabaru in Ocarina of Time, although she's an NPC, she is captured and brainwashed by the twin Worva sisters. She offers her power to Link in order to defeat Ganondorf and it is very memorable how all the Gerudos are black women and also a Themyscira type of tribe because of the race of Gerudo consists only of women. Although, according to lore, only a male Gerudo is born every century and becomes king of the Gerudos. But, Nabaru doesn't like Ganondorf. The winner of the Video Game Awards of 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild featured lots of people of color in the game. Not just Cerudos, 
but also people in towns and characters like Riju, Urbosa, King Roam, and many more. The Walking Dead There are black protagonists as well that are so very memorable and these ones are the following in this game of The Walking Dead and others that I'm about to touch on. Lee Everett of Telltale's The Walking Dead was once a professor. Convicted for murdering a state senator who slept with his wife, Lee is freed from his fate by the apocalypse and encounters a young girl named Clementine. He took Clementine under his care and the two met up with a group of survivors. Lee rose up to protect them, becoming co-leader with Kenny and Lily before becoming the sole leader of the group. Lee's personality is to some extent up to the player, but he is consistently smart independent and resourceful. Lee also cared deeply for Clementine. It was because of Lee that Clementine learned how to defend herself from both people and the undead in the apocalypse. Clementine is another one to remember as well. A mature, kind, and polite girl, she acts as the moral compass of the group and tries her best to maintain the humanity of the group in a post-apocalyptic world. After losing the people closest to her, Clementine becomes hardened and more mature in her outlook, but still bravely overcomes the dangers of a post-apocalyptic world and tries her best to maintain some of her previous faith in humanity, hanging on to what Lee taught her and her own values. As time goes on, however, Clementine develops more brash and forceful traits distrusting others and doing whatever it takes to stay alive. She holds a firm belief that nothing good will come out of being in group anymore and regularly stays by herself. Now a matured early teen, Clementine is far more independent individual, making her own choices based on her own beliefs and values. Not to forget also that Michonne had her own game in Telltale's Walking Dead, which tells her story on how she is living during the apocalypse you got nothing left and what, what also what I also really like about this Michonne character although not voiced by the actress that portrays her in the show Danai Gurira Samira Wiley known for her role as Pusey Washington in the hit TV series Orange is the New Black voices her Grand Theft Auto in the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas video game is Carl Johnson aka CJ after his mother is killed, he returns home to San Andreas from Liberty City. While Claude and Tommy Versetti are both depicted as completely heartless and feeling no regret for all the people that they kill, CJ is depicted as having a considerably less violent personality, occasionally giving his targets a chance to redeem themselves. An example is his failed attempt at convincing Eddie Pulaski to see that he was no more than Officer Tenpenny's pawn. Furthermore, CJ displays genuine remorse for having to kill Ryder and Big Smoke, who he considered close friends. However, CJ has no problem with killing members of other gangs and willfully slaughters any that get in his way of reclaiming Grove Street family turf or try to sabotage his businesses. Though, in return, the gangsters are trying to kill CJ also. CJ's naive personality, inexperience, and face value interpretations of other characters responses occasionally leads them to question CJ's intelligence, like the truth and Catalina. CJ, like his brother Sweet, holds a deep-seated loyalty towards Grove Street and the hood, as seen in his reaction to the resentful attitude of his friends and siblings early on. Franklin Clinton of GTA is described to be ambitious, but perhaps to a fault and very eager to take on new illegal challenges. He is also described as calm, smart, rational, and a logical way of showing a young man with a lot of hope, with Dan Hauser claiming that this will be a nice contrast from Michael. Victor Vance is the older brother of Lance Vance in Vice City Stories. He is Dominican-American and also tough and sometimes strict person when it comes to the crimes he unwillingly commits. Vic is also shown to be a short-tempered man, easily becoming provoked upon watching the foolish actions made by other characters, most notably his younger brother, Lance, and is more rational than his easy-going, cheerful, yet equally short-tempered younger brother. Resident Evil Since the first Resident Evil game, there have been NPC characters of color, but later we've had playable ones. Although in Resident Evil 2 offers some 
or Marvin Bernard dies, he provides either Leon or Claire with a key card in the station. In the Resident Evil series, Sheva Alomar is shown to be extremely loyal to her fellow BSAA comrades. When Chris was planning on count continuing the mission in Africa, Sheva tried to talk him out of it, out of concern for his safety. However, after hearing that Chris was in Africa not only to complete the mission but also because his old partner, Jill Valentine, who was thought to be dead, is still alive and somewhere in Africa. Sheva continued the mission with Chris, resolving to that. Another instance about this loyalty is when Chris went missing in Edonia, she sent a message of concern to Pierce Nimads to ask if she can be of any help. Josh Stone is a pilot who loses his brother, but accompanies his BSAA teammates to the end. Assassin's Creed In Assassin's Creed Liberation, there's Aveline de Grand Pré, who, even as a young girl, Aveline noticed the prevailing contradictions present in New Orleans society, where slavery and freedom evolved side by side. As she grew, she found herself torn between the values she had inherited from her parentage, which compelled her to form her own core beliefs. With these ideals matching up with those of the Brotherhood, Aveline soon joined the Assassins, striving to rid Louisiana of the Templars and fight against injustice. In Black Flag and Liberation, Adewale was more serious and less brash, acting as a voice of reason to Edward's grandiose ambitions. Nonetheless, he had a small sense of humor, as shown when he jokingly called the Observatory, Captain Kenway's Folly, due to Edward's selfish actions to seek the precursor site. He was also a humble individual deciding to have Edward captain the Jackdaw, despite Edward's inexperience as captain. Though Adewale had chosen a life of piracy, he found that when serving under Edward, he had lacked the conviction to partake in an industry of dishonest work. After being introduced to the assassins and the failure of Nassau, Adewale was opened up to the wisdom and nobil nobility of the assassins and served them dutifully. Due to the harsh treatment he had as a slave, Adewale notably spoke out against it and even lost his composure. He was unwilling to cooperate with Edward once he realized that he was bartering with Lawrence Prince, a known slaver. Moreover, he also warned Edward not to fire at slave ships, worried about the lives below deck, and was appalled at how reckless Charles Vane was, who fired blindly at the same. He also gave Defaye a slow and painful death when the latter disregarded the slaves as mere animals, which is something that a lot of slave masters did to their slaves, labeling them as nothing but animals, and that is a very sad and tragic thing. Of course, there are various other video games such as Mass Effect and any MMORPG you play in. You can change the skin color of your avatar to black. Let us not also forget that there are other memorable black characters such as Balrog, Birdie, Elena, DJ, and Dudley from Street Fighter. From Call of Duty, we remember Staff Sergeant Griggs, Sergeant Foley, Truck, and many more. Even 50 Cent had his own video game as well. Black Cat characters are featured in other games such as No More Heroes, Soul Calibur, Virtua Fighter, Tekken, and many more. Like LGBT and female representations, I say black representations are good for gaming as well. What makes them so good is how they make it more about their life experiences in the world of gaming and not about their gender, their skin color, or sexual orientation. Like Avery Brooks said in a convention. Um, Benjamin Sisko, do you, do you feel significant in television or society that the leader, the captain, the commander, the kind of leading figure was black? Or is it just he was a character you know, he happened to be black, or was it, did it really mean something? Does it mean something to me? Or? Either to you, or do you feel like, wow, this is actually a big deal, I'm getting to do something that I think is important? Oh, no. I didn't think that at all. Okay. No, I'm just <laughs> telling you. No. Tell me. No. If every day I wake up, and I say to myself, Okay, 
I'm gonna do a brown male thing today. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, people say, what was it like being, you know, a black captain? You can't play that. <laughs> Dude, I got you can't play Star Trek, and guess what color I am? You can't play that. How do you play that color? You can't do that. What I can do is wake up in the morning like I told you, as Samuel and Eva's child. And who is that? A human being. And brown and male and American and all these things. That's what I bring. And they saw that and decided they were going to do that. There was nothing in, in, in what I read, at least, which identified him as such. Thank you. That's actually exactly what I wanted to okay. know. Okay. And finally, in conclusion, it was an honor writing this episode, especially in this time of the month. I like a lot of black characters in video games due to the way they were created, their character development, how they see the world around them, and so on. And also, it's not about them being black. It's about them as characters, and that can be a juicy part to play. Why? Because you can go so many directions with that as long as you don't make it about their race, or their gender, or their sexual orientation. A good character development should not be about being white, black, Latino, Asian, not even whether the character is a man or a woman, and not even if the character is heterosexual, gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. Representation is important, but do not reduce it to whiteness, blackness, straightness, or gayness. Until next time, gamers, this is John, host of Video Games in the World. Have a good one. Bye-bye.